die for. Live to no end. This is living. The life I've been given is a gift. If I'm a living, I'm a living to death. So what's the dream of? What's the hope in? What's the die for? And live to no end. This is living. The life I've been given is a gift. If I'm a living, I'm a living to death. Yeah. All right, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to the Living Hope Agency Call. I couldn't be more excited to interview our special guest today, Mr. Primetime Jesse Hantlow. Jesse, how we doing, man? What's up, brother? How are you? Dude, you're doing, doing fantastic today. Awesome, man. Hey, thank you so much for joining us. Um, you're somebody that I've wanted to have on the call for a really long time, and especially as the company is really changing their tune when it comes to, you know, especially switching from this advanced market solutions to simple retirement solutions. And I love that change because it doesn't have to be advanced. It really can be something that is simple, that doesn't have to scare people. And I look at your story, you know, you're somebody that's young, like a lot of our agents. And a lot of the times, you know, I think there was a statistic that Sean gave us the other day. He said the average age of an agent who sold a life insurance policy in 2022 with Family First Life was 25 years old, which blew my mind. The average advanced market agent was 47. So that shows you that there was just some sort of a disconnect there. And I feel like you were one of the first people in the company that decided I'm going to, you know, be one of those younger agents that's going to learn this, that's going to master it and make it something that's going to help me become more profitable to serve more clients. So we'll get to all that stuff because that's a really cool thing that I'm excited to hear about and learn from you. But you've had a whole journey here, not just with Family First Life and insurance. You know, I remember watching you on Andrew Taylor, Family First Life USA podcast and hearing some of your story. So I'm excited for you to share some of that with the team. So we'd love to just hear, you know, your background, you know, where you came from, how you even got to insurance before we get to, you know, your journey with Family First Life. <laughs> well, it's a funny fluke story, like most of us or many of us have. Um, I was actually working for Tesla at the time on a travel trip in San Diego because I was down in the, the area training the shop, helping them get on charge to get more efficiency systems in. And I was out to dinner at a little cigar lounge and I ran into some guy who worked for uh, one of our practice companies, you know, the three letter words. And he's like, hey, you want to come join this and this and that? And I was like, dude, that sounds like a scam. I'm good. I'll, that's a hard pass, right? And fast forward about a year, I get promoted and I get laid off with Tesla. So I see him posting again, but he's at a new company and they're, they've got some amazing results and track record. So I was like, you know what, dude, like, what do I have to lose? I told myself if I'm going to get out of the automotive industry, I'm going to become my own boss. And that was one of their slogans, become my own boss. And then next thing you know, Fast forward a couple of years after slamming my head through the wall and not getting anywhere. You know, Sean says, run through walls, move fast and break things. Well, I ran through walls, broke a lot of things, uh, ended up having a car repoed, nearly getting evicted. And then I got into FFL and kind of the rest is history. It was absolutely able to turn things around, guys. And then prior to me getting here, I was donating plasma on unemployment, donating plasma on unemployment right before I started officially with FFL. And I remember this pretty vividly because the, the girl that reached out to me, she sends me messages. I'm sitting down in the chair and she's like, Jesse, what are you doing? I said, I'm donating plasma. She's like, what the heck are you doing that for, bro? Like, why don't you come over here and sell some insurance? You're a beast. And I was like, I don't know about all that. I'm good. I'm going to do a hard pass. And then I got on the phone with Josh Crenshaw. You guys know him, integrity partner. And then I ended up moving all my contracts over here. And then that was the week of Christmas. And how many of you guys actually have ever ran in the field around a holiday? Let's get a one in the chat for that. One in the chat, if you guys ever run in the field over a holiday and you're getting pushback, like, okay. So I didn't have any confidence. I was donating plasma. I was like 35, 40 pounds heavier than what I am now. I, I had no hope. I had no belief in myself. I was scared crapless just to move anywhere. Right. And the next thing, you know, I ended up starting get into insurance and dude, actually your story, Jamie, uh, when I first went to my first event just over two years ago and I was like, dude, I love this good, this guy's story. And he's just hilarious. Like I remember your opening line, you know, my name's Jamie Cheerio, like the cereal brand. Like I was, I was dying. I was like, I like this guy. Um, and you know, I'm just blessed to be here, dude. So that's kind of my story. It's, uh, 
been a roller coaster the last few years, um, but it's definitely been a fun learning lesson. So I love it, man. I, lo- I love it. So I think kind of the thing that I'm most interested in hearing because you came in and obviously, you know, just like most people, you, you started to dial on Mondays and Thursdays, run in the field, you know, Tuesday, Wednesday, you know, Friday, Saturday, you did all the things you sold final expense, you sold mortgage protection, instant internet leads, you did all that stuff. Like at what point did you, um, I guess, just like have that light bulb moment of like, I'm going to start tuning into these advanced market trainings and start learning about IUL and retirement and annuity. And like, why was that even attractive to you when you saw that most people were not plugging into that? Like, what was the opportunity that you saw there? Yeah. So at my first company I was at, we were, we would help a lot of families with IULs and FIAs. So that was one thing that I always really was fascinated about was compounding interest. I was absolutely obsessed with how compounding interest works, why it operates, how it's going to be beneficial. And, you know, I was just really, really coachable. They said, here's your schedule, plug into all the trainings. So literally I plugged into every single training. Monday through Sunday, I was on a training call seven days a week. I listened to YouTube university while I slept. Uh, I would just got extremely obsessed with everything that I had to do. And I started listening to uh, Sean Ruggiero as soon as I got here. And he said, ask a golden question in every house and you're going to eventually find him. And eventually I started to find it, right? More you ask it, the more you find it, the more you find it, the more opportunities you might have. And eventually, you know, I, as you find one, you start to find more and more and more and more. And it, I just, I just kept kind of building off of that momentum, you know? I love it. So let's pretend for a second, like everybody on this call is brand new and all they know about is final expense and mortgage protection. They don't even know what an IUL and annuity, um, any of those things are, why they would be important. They don't know, they don't know what the golden question is. So like, give us a quick um, kindergarten lesson on like, what is, what's within this simple retirement solution department? What, um, what products and opportunities can we offer to our clients and how can they help? Yeah, absolutely. So a few things um, we do help with it's fixed index annuities, which is an area where you can reallocate either savings accounts, retirement funds to protect it from ever being lost in the market. You only participate with market gains. You can turn it into lifetime income, avoids probate, and you have the ability for tax deferral as well. Um, if you have a Roth IRA, you are able to transfer that over and benefit from it. Uh, Index Universal Life, uh, it's a tax-free retirement vehicle that you can leverage to borrow money from it tax-free. And then one of my favorite things is called infinite banking. So it's a specially designed process with a whole life where you can become your own bank with infinite banking because you're going to leverage against your death benefit while money compounds interest uninterrupted and you'll have liquidity within 30 days. So one of my favorite programs is that as well as the FIAs. That's my two go-tos for sure. I love it. Um, Especially because you went from the the be your own boss to be your own bank, which is. uh, (laughs) I I like that. (laughs) Uh, And, and Jamie also to you guys, I built a financial inventory And it's got all the health questions. And this is one thing that really just helped me stay structured as one, one thing I would always do, I would just kind of like free flow and use the inventory. But if I didn't have the actual questions in front of me, there would be times I would forget it. So it's like, I need to build my own inventory to where it's built exactly how I like to run my in-home or my phone presentation, extremely thorough. You're able to dive into all the medical questions You know, are they paying any extra money towards their mortgage? Do you have life insurance? Who's your beneficiaries for A and B applicants? Are you more of a spender or saver? This is going to be, yeah, there we go. Thank you. So are you more of a spender or saver? That's going to be your silver question, guys. And this is how you're going to find um, what they call as the simple retirement solution opportunities, right? Are you more of a spender? Because if you're a spender, we need to get some insurance in front of you because there's a good chance you're never going to save up money and if you have something like an IUL or a specially designed whole life, you can go ahead and leverage that money where it's going to compound interest over time. 
Now, next question will be your golden question. Do you have anything else in place that acts like life insurance, such as a 401k, IRA, stocks, bonds, mutual funds, pension plan, CDs, or savings? Whatever it is, guys, this is one thing I would highly recommend. Anytime you're working with what they call as advanced market, don't, don't be all super excited when you come across it. Don't get super excited. Stay very level. Just fact find, discovery. So when you're sitting there, you're going to go ahead and just circle whatever it is. Is it a current or past employer? So if they have a 401k or something like that, current or past employer, it's current. If it's a past, that's cool because then you can actually reallocate it. If it's a current employer, you need to make sure that they're over the age of 59 and a half. Guys, this is the magic number, 59 and a half and younger, and it's their current employer, you can't move it. If they're over 59 and a half, you can do what they call an in-service distribution. So you guys probably know some people that are still working at their job for a long, 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 long time, and they're over age of 59 and a half, and you'll be able to help them move that money. And then the next question that's going to be next to that, it says, is it protected from market risk? Just circle it, yes or no. Okay? Circle it, yes or no. And guys, I would highly recommend, like, flip through this when you get some free time. And Jamie, if you can, scroll down. So if you're doing things over the phone, because I went from being 100% in the field for my first year, uh, I would say first nine, 10 months, I was completely in the phone. Then I went hybrid for about three months. And then all last year, I ran pretty much everything over the phone. Back-to-back Hall of Fame too. So now I like to use this sheet because every single person that I fill out with, I don't have to have extra paper. I've got it right on my iPad in an app called Notability. So I keep all my clients super organized. If my client gets declined, I've got all the information so I can pivot super easy. I'm not that one guy asking their client like, 12 times, hey, what was your social again? What was your banking info? Like, it's super annoying. The client gets pissed off. Like, just just be a professional and have something like this that you can stay organized where you're not losing your stuff. Uh, If you need extra notes, cool. If you're actually in a home and you want to get an authorization to go ahead and submit for uh, application, get that. You got your authorization. Um, term, whole life, universal life, cashback option. So if you're a brand new agent, it's got some cheat sheets there. Um, yeah, you're kind of going too fast. And then um, go right there. So if you guys ever cross I-10, anything like that, good resource. If you guys don't know what a variable universal life, it's there. We end up replacing them a lot of the times with something where they never lose money. Because if it's variable, that means it's not safe. It's in the market. You can lose money. Now, fixed index annuities. Here's some word tracks for you guys. So if you're brand new, you don't know what you're doing, please take note on this. It's on page four, right? So Jamie, if you want, let's just role play this out really quick. So like for a lot of people who aren't familiar, right? So we're just going to act like you just purchased your mortgage protection for your house. So we got you like a CBO 25. And you have an old 401k from your past job. Okay. All right. So the insurance is sold. So Jamie, all right. So everything's completed. You're going to go and get your application or your policy here in the mail in the next few days. Now, you know, just wanted to reiterate, Jamie, I do specialize with mortgage protection, life uh, life insurance and safe retirement planning. Now, what that means is I'm able to help you protect your money from ever being lost in the market. Now, currently right now, how much money are you willing to lose in the market if your 401k continues, if it continues to perform how it is right now? I mean, I'd, I'd prefer not to lose any more. Okay. So if we could protect your money from ever being lost in the market, locking in your gains, would you find value in this? I mean, that sounds interesting. Okay. So the average growth the last 10 years has been somewhere between about 5 and 11%, depending on how the program's designed. You'll have protection from downside market risk from the stock market. And it also provide an income where you can never outlive your money. Then whatever the leftover amount is, you'll be able to pass as a death benefit. Now, the easy way to think about this, Jamie, it's just like reallocating your money from one piggy bank to another. That way we can keep your money safe and your family and yourself happy over time. Does that sound fair? Yeah, it sounds fair. What do we, what do we have to do to learn about something like that? Yeah, so if you can, grab a statement, and then what we'll do, we'll meet back up here at the same time, and we can go ahead and review this. I'm going to go ahead and meet with my Simple Retirement Solution team, and we're going to go ahead and put a plan together for you. And I, I still say that, like, even though I'm 
one of five or six people in the entire company that's helping everybody with this, I still say, I'm going to go ahead and consult with my team to make sure we're putting you in the best position. I really do appreciate this little word track right here. And it's really cool to see because that's um, for me, you know, I'm also a two-time Hall of Fame producer planning on doing it a third time this year and really wanting to uh, put some of these fixed indexed annuities into it. And Mm -hmm. I remember having a conversation with one of the top annuity producers from back in the day. I won't mention his name, but he goes, all right, Jamie, what do you say when you ask about an annuity? I'm like, well, I've only done it like once or twice. He's like, just, I'm like, I didn't want to tell you. He's like, what'd you say? I was like, I just asked him if they've ever heard of an annuity. (laughs) <laughs> and he, like, he, spit, he spit out his water and he was just like, dude, like, how do you ever expect to protect someone with an annuity by asking them, have you ever heard of an annuity? He's like, there's so much baggage that comes with that question because mm-hmm. a lot of the time the annuity that the client thinks they know about is not the same annuity that we're protecting clients with today. So they've got baggage in their mind about that word. And he's like, do you even ask the golden question? I'm like, I've asked the golden question, but then I don't know what to say afterwards. So I (laughs) I really do appreciate you having some word tracks for us, man. Heck yeah. And that's, this is one thing that I, I, I had to put together for myself so I would remember it because, you know, when you get caught up on appointments, sometimes you forget your placement, right? And it's it's really powerful, man, because you know, a lot of the people in in this group who've been with me for a while, they know I tell the story that when I was going into my first home, I took so many notes on the Paul McLean, you know, eight steps to a final expense in home. And I was like, man, I wish I could just take my notes into the home with me. And then I had this light bulb moment, like, well, why don't I just take my notes into the home with me? The client has no idea what I'm doing. This will help keep me in place. And we developed what's called our in-home agenda, which is very similar to this, but it was just a piece of paper that we kept in front of us, slid in front of the client and said, here's what we're going to do today. And to the client, it was a structure. And to me, it was not forget what to say. So I love that you have this built right into your financial inventory, whether you're doing an in-home or you're doing a telesale to have this in front of you. It's just, it's a part of the process. It's Mm -hmm. something you don't forget. Um, So you can include this in every single presentation, whether it's a final expense, a mortgage protection, a general life insurance lead, you always ask the silver and the golden question, I'm sure. Yeah. And, And you had mentioned you started selling final expense, regular life insurance, and then you transitioned into this. And just so we're, we're clear guys, like last year, I think I was the number three annuity producer. And many people say like, you must be running some crazy annuity leads, or you must be running something special. You got the secret sauce, right? Like I'm a internet lead junkie and I use call tools to my upper hand advantage, right? So I buy a lot of internet leads specifically when they go on sale, right? When they go on sale, I buy as much as I can in the, the States that I'm wanting to dial in and I just let it rip and roar. I do some Facebook leads, but for the most part, like I'm buying the same leads, a brand new agent that doesn't have money is working. Why do I do that? So I can prove that you can make good money with this and I'm working alongside my agents. So that way they know like I'm in the trenches getting yelled at or getting told to F off just like you are. I'm not working something special, but I'm asking all of the thorough questions and I'm finding these opportunities, right? So here's something I want to talk about real quick, then is the the topic of internet leads, because some people they'll look at an internet lead and they'll be like, well, the internet leads, they're, they're hard, they're harder to work. The there's, there's lower intent. And my argument is always, you know, you have to understand the behavior of who that lead is and how they filled it out and what their experience is. And their experience most of the time is they were looking for a quote. They tried to find a quote. You can't find a quote anywhere on the internet. All, all you can get is a phone call. So they, they, they filled out our form and went into our ILC. We're the only agent that's calling them, but because they didn't get a quote, they filled out six other forms. Their phone's now blowing up with phone calls and they're overwhelmed with phone mm-hmm. calls. And if it was a month ago, a month old lead or a three month old lead, their month, was, their, their phone was blown up with phone calls a month ago or three months ago. So when you call that person, you have to understand that that's the behavior. So A lot of the times I feel like that lead that jumps down your throat sometimes is actually the best buyer and you have to be the one that can kind of diffuse and calm them down and get Mm -hmm. them to trust you and bring that sales pressure down. So for you, you know, you'll, I'll have people dial in internet leads and the only thing that they're selling are, you know, small final expense policies. They say, all these people are broke. Well, for you, I would argue to say that you have to actually get good on the phones 
to find the people that have money. And a lot of the times the people that have money, they're not always the easiest to book an appointment with. They're not always the easiest person to one call close for their life insurance. So what's been your experience there? And I guess what would be your encouragement for someone dialing internet leads about how they can find higher quality clients in the stack by getting better on the phones? Just activity, you know, activity, 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 plugging into a live dial team, making sure you're around top producers. I mean, shoot, last year, I think it was last year, maybe the year before last, you spoke on the relentless call and you were talking about the exact same thing you just did. And it was the psychology of an internet lead. And that turned everything around for me, dude. Like that really, really helped me boost it. Cause I was treating it like it was like a brand new boom, boom lead, like ready to go right off the press. Like, and I'm dialing three, six month old leads or one year old leads or one month old leads or whatever. And I just got into the habit more of explaining the process of how it is like, Jamie, you know, just so you're on the same page with me, your program, this request, it's actually been flagged. It's still open. I'm just the manager to get this closed. You know, if you don't want to get this and I get it, you're probably getting lots of phone calls. And at the end of the day, we just have to get this out to you. Would you prefer mornings, afternoons, or evenings? Boom. Just move into it. Right. Absolutely. And I think Um, there's there's something in regards to like, it's not just what you say, because people can have those words. It's that how you make the client feel safe mm-hmm. because they don't feel super safe when they're getting bombarded with telemarketers. So it's, it's the, it's that presence and the tone on the phone that comes from being an experienced agent dialing where no matter how much the client barks at you, you don't bark back or you don't like put your tail between your legs. You're just like completely unfazed. Mm-hmm. No matter yeah. what they say. Exactly. Yeah. And you just got to keep a cool, calm and collective. And, you know, I just think of like, be a cool cucumber, you know, just be chilling. You're no, no big deal. Whether it's up, it's down, you're still cool. But like anytime I've got someone on the phone, I like to have my energy. So when I get connected, literally, like if you ever plug into my dial team, you'll see like brand new agents get on. I'm like, yes, right. I'm getting energy going. I want to smile. I want to have energy flowing through the room. Right. And you, you come from the network marketing background and I was able to fortunate enough to meet a lot of your old buddies, uh, back in January and break break the code. I saw you into that. Great. Yeah. And guys, super good guys. And, and that's one of the things is like, if you want to make money, you have to have energy. If you want to do things in your life, you have to get energy flowing. Like for instance, Josh doesn't become a badass bodybuilder by eating Twinkies and not working out. Like you could tell the dude goes to the gym, right? He gets after it. Like he's a stud. I don't even know the guy, but I'm like, bro, that's try. That's where I'm going, right? But how do we get there? You've got to have energy flowing in your conversation. If someone yells at you, dude, no big deal. Like it's all good, Josh. Um, I understand why you wouldn't want to do this. You've probably got a thousand people calling you all the time. You know, it's pretty simple. It's just to get this wrapped up. Takes five minutes, grab a pen and paper. And then you're into the phone call. You're into the conversation. And next thing you know, you're, you're moving through the process. Yeah. And because you actually connected with them and you weren't just yelling and being combative, like guys, how often do you want to get combative with most of the people you talk to? Every single day, dude, I want to yell at these people. I want to slam them, my phone through their head. Yeah. But we can't like, it's all good, dude. I get you. Mm -hmm. And, but don't take it personal too. If someone's off, like it could just be bad timing. If you get a no, it's next opportunity. Keep moving and cruising. That's good, man. That's good. I think a good transition here. Um, Obviously, you know, you plugged into the, what were then the AMS calls every Thursday to get started. Now, uh, for anybody who's here, uh, new format here with Family First Life in regards to the corporate training, uh, we had our Thursday advanced markets. We switched again from advanced markets to simple retirement solutions because we don't want people to think that it's just for the advanced agents. This is something that new agents can do too. And it is now a segment within the next level live, which is a Facebook live put out by corporate every single week on the Family First Life. Facebook page. The first half is going to be sales training on how to sell life insurance. And the second half is going to be simple retirement solution training on how to um, get these, um, get these solutions in the hands of our clients. So um, I guess for you, 
what would you recommend other than just plugging into that call? What types of things can people educate themselves with? Because I'm sure that you didn't just say, I'm just going to listen. Yeah, I'm sure you listened to everything that Family First Life had to offer, but you probably also started listening to some things even outside of Family First Life to educate yourself. So how, how can new agents start to educate themselves on these, these products so they sound like they actually know what they're talking about with clients? Uh, fastest way that I learned, Jamie, was I found it and then I leveraged somebody with that was smarter than me. <laughs> uh, at first, what I did was, you know, I had, there's a couple guys that I work with here at FFL and I was like, hey, I don't really know what I'm doing. I found this statement. I've got the illustration from the team. What do I do? I don't know how to close this. I don't know the word track. I don't know the process. I was freaking out. I was overthinking in my head. And he's like, bro, it's okay. Like, just get him on the phone. We'll, I'll walk you through the process. We'll split it. I was like, okay, cool. And I learned by splitting. Um, doing my infinite banking, did that. My, my first handful of annuities, I did that. IULs, I pretty much have learned um, from the past company. So that was just kind of getting it refined. But then... Other tools and resources, YouTube University, guys. Just type in whatever subject you want to learn. Infinite banking, you can learn about it. There's a bunch of really good stuff. Uh, IULs, type in how to structure IULs. You'll find all the information on there. Why are IULs important? A lot of good videos on there. Um, there is just one thing I do want to touch base on, guys. Like, Whenever you are doing that, if something doesn't sound right, just ask questions because... When it we are talking about these type of cases for someone's retirement, we do want to make sure we are structuring them properly, right? You got to make sure you're structuring it properly because if it's not done right, and it might favor you as the agent, where a lot of agents I've seen do it, they structure the policy so they get paid the maximum, right? And in a lot of cases, if we're doing that, it's going to leave the client without insurance down the road where it's going to lapse, so if you ever have questions, you see your policy is going to lapse on your illustration, just reach out. Um, if you guys aren't currently following me on Instagram, feel free to reach out, stay prime time. Or if you want, I can drop my number in the chat. So I'm an open book. Um, when you guys do need any help or leverage closing clients, we could put case studies together, jump on discovery calls with your clients, figure out a way that we're going to be able to do this and Let's just keep maximizing and, and working together all as a team so we can get this company to a $10 billion, 10 billion. I keep telling Sean every time I see him, he's like, we're going to do a billion. I'm like, we're going to 10, Sean, 10 shot. He's like, Jesse, you're crazy, bro. I love it, man. Um, any, so now let's, I love this, but let's, let's now pull it back a little bit to uh, new agents getting started. You got a new agent who's getting started and they're just looking for what is the best track that I can run on to get started, um, whether it's leads, schedule, protecting your dial time. What kind of advice can you give? Oh, my God. Everything you just said, protecting your dial time, um, making sure your mindset's right. Because if, if you don't have your mind right, like you're, it's going to be really, really hard to have a functioning conversation with your client because your client can hear your conversation. Your client can hear your, your tonality. He can hear, he or she can hear how, what, what your confidence level is. Because sometimes like when you're a brand new agent, it's easy to get caught up on an objection, but get obsessed with learning your projections. Do role-playing with your mom, your dad, record yourself if you're a brand new agent. Um, one thing, like, I, I think, I don't know if you guys heard it, but when I was brand new, I went on YouTube, I found people that had dial objections, in-home mortgage protection, annuities, all of the stuff that I wanted to learn. And I put it into like several playlists and I would just put it on play and I would fall asleep and I'd wake up and I would be talking like Paul McLean and I'd wake up and I'd be talking like Brian Mendenhall. And then I would get into a client's house and I would be doing the here's a bloody driver's license skit. And I was like, I don't even know where I found this. Like, where did that come from? And then I watch the videos while I'm actually awake. And I'm like, dang, I just said that in the house. And that's where I learned it from while I was sleeping. That's, that's badass. Like program, reprogram your subconscious mind doing that. Um, uh, Cassia asked, uh, do you think it's harder to closing annuities over the phone? It can be. When you're brand new, it's it's a lot because you want to overcomplicate it, but you just got to keep it super simple. 
Um, I've had probably a half a dozen opportunities this month um, or in the, probably the last four weeks, five weeks, where I've closed uh, annuities, one call close. <laughs> one call close annuities. And and it's pretty crazy when you do that or where it, uh, an agent finds it, says, hey, Jesse, I've got this opportunity. Can we get on a call? Yeah. Jump on the call, 45 minutes, we're in application, it's already submitted. Done. Start to finish. So it can be way more difficult, but we just have to get smart with it. If you guys aren't using this yet, um, there's a an app. If you're doing a lot of telesales, this is going to save your life. You, If you don't know about this already, you will probably make 20% to 30% more money by using this application. It's called Crank Wheel. Mm-hmm. Has anybody used Crank Wheel before? If you know what I'm talking about, you go, Jesse, I make a lot more money because of this. My, myself and actually Kasha, who asked the question, just learned about Crank Wheel the other day from our, our health insurance <laughs> broker who, who used it to show us our premium. Oh, my God. It's, Sick. It's, it's awesome software. So for anybody who doesn't know about Crank Wheel, Crank Wheel is a really cool software. I just discovered. I haven't really shared it with many people yet, but you're able to just send a, rather than just getting on Zoom with somebody, you can be on a phone call and you can send them a link via email or via text message. And at any point they can watch your screen or whatever part of your screen that you want them to watch. So you got Miss Mary who's sitting there on her Android, you know, and she's 75 final expense. And you just want to even show her the America quote tool just to show her that or even the application as you punch in her social security number. So she knows you're not just storing it to steal her information. Mm -hmm. Just quickly text message her a link. She clicks on it and then your screen pops up right there on her browser and she can watch you fill out the application. Or in this case, I'm sure it's really powerful when it comes to uh, running through illustration. Yep. It's huge. So credibility websites do that. So if you guys, I'm sure you're probably using Zippo or uh, Baymax or something, crank wheel, C-R-A-N-K. There you go. Put it in the chat for you. So crank wheel, super helpful tool. Um, so get systems in place, get structure in place and just, just start running as fast as you can. Ask a lot of questions, um, but have something like my financial inventory that will help you You guys are getting stuck on it, trying to get it downloaded. Just go onto it, click file, make a copy and you'll be able to download it. Um, Fantastic, man. Yeah. We could, we could keep slamming into this. If anybody has any questions or if, if you're good, you just let me know. Sure. No, a couple more questions. If your team implemented anything on the sales lock inside the getting in person together to sell together. You know, that's the next step for me. I want to implement ever since Josh and everybody has been doing these lock-ins, I really, really want to do this. And that's been my main focus, but it, it's kind of tough. I've got everybody everywhere. Um, totally. I, I don't have a real heavy concentration of agents just in one territory. They're scattered from coast to coast. So. Yeah. And that's kind of our, our deal with the team too. I mean, I probably have seven, eight agents who work out of my group, my Greenville office here on a daily basis, but we've got agents coming in from across the country to come into this one location. So uh, are you in South Carolina now? You're in South Carolina now. No, oh, dude, no longer in Oregon. Oh, when did you move? I didn't even know that. About six months ago. So we're loving it out here. Both on the East coast. Let's go. Let's go, man. Let's go. We'll get you out here and we'll have some fun. Let's do it. Awesome. Um, great. So let me see if I got any last questions for you, man. Um, why should somebody register for the 20, 20- 24 annual convention in Dallas, Texas. Oh my gosh. The, the number one reason you want to do this is if you want to become the next best version of yourself, you have to get into rooms with people that are doing the things that you want to do. Um, like I don't see him. Is he still here? I saw him here a second ago, but like Nat, for instance, Nat DiCarlo, I think I taught he, he did something crazy last year, like six, 700, 800 families or something last year. Yes, a lot. I think the closer to 800. Yeah, the guy's a beast. And But it's like getting in rooms, being able to like shake his hand. Hey, how what are you doing? What are you doing? Like, how do I do what you're doing? And you get to have an, a one-on-one conversation with people and it makes it real. I remember literally like it was yesterday when I first met you and you were smashing it super hard in the field, no excuses. And I was like, dude, what do I need to do to be making money like you? And you laid out the ground rule 
And now I'm on your call training. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, dude, you, you just need to get in front of uh, people and get in front of people, absorb the information like a sponge. And for me, it was just making it real that everybody doing super, super big numbers and having massive agencies, the, there was no difference between them besides they were doing the work. They were just executing more than I was. And it was proof that I could, I could be those guys walking across the stage, getting the red jacket, training on stage, doing all that stuff. Eventually I knew it could be me, but I had to get uncomfortable. So. Awesome, man. Hey, thank you so much, man. We appreciate the words of encouragement. We appreciate access to that financial inventory. That's fire. I'm excited to be able to use that myself and share it with the team. That's like just a huge, huge value add for us. So we do really appreciate you kind of opening a lot of our agents eyes for the first time to the simple retirement solution, man. Um, really great opportunity. And we uh, we're very thankful for having you on the call. Drop a, drop a thank you in the chat for Jesse, everybody, um, everybody. It's still early. It's still 542 over here on the East coast. It's only 242 on the West coast for you people on the West coast. So plenty of families to still help um, everybody have an amazing night and we'll see you guys on live dials. Thanks, Jesse. Later guys. Thanks for having me here, bro. See you guys soon. God bless.